Welcome to a point for reflection for Thursday, the 2nd of July, 2020. What do you think about when you hear the word love? It fills our popular culture and the rom-com movie is big business. I wouldn't hazard a guess at how many love songs have actually been written. The youth can be led to believe they are the first to know love, and its passions and joy can be a distant memory to others. Love can conjure up all sorts of feelings, emotions, regrets, and it is big business. Love can be accepted or spurned, sometimes denied, and cause extremely dark feelings and pain. It is documented among psychologists that one cannot love another if there is not first self-love. It is believed that this self-love is enabled or disabled in childhood, when a child is surrounded by healthy, unconditional, accepting love. They are more able to give love on the same basis as an adult. The Bible can be both celebratory and dismissive of human relationships. The Apostle Paul wrote, If you cannot restrain your desires, go ahead and marry. It is better to marry than to burn with passion. This was amid a chapter where his attitude towards marriage is both progressive for the time, but equally negative. He seems to be saying, if you must. See 1 Corinthians chapter 7. This was in response to questions the people of the Corinthian church were asking Paul. They wanted to know if they should marry or not, as Jesus was coming back so soon. Love can be expressed in many different ways, as a physical act, such as giving someone chocolates or flowers, by paying someone attention, or sitting with someone through their illness and recovery. Sometimes that is a brotherly sisterly love, and sometimes it is a sexual desire. Have you ever written a love poem? It is something that is seen as romantic and expressive. A few weeks ago there was a report about the actor Peter Gordon. He left a poem for his wife under her pillow for 25 years of their married life. He continued to do so four years after her death. These poems have been turned into a website, A Love in Verse. While researching this website, their daughters commented about the hope that was in these verses and how they contained the message that love redeems even after death. By his own admission, these little poems started out as being for a laugh. But writing these verses kept Peter Gordon grounded in the love shed between his wife and himself, as well as with his family, especially when he was away on tour. Some years ago I went to a spring harvest week, and I remember vividly hearing a preacher whose name I have forgotten, but I do remember he was Australian. As part of his address in the big top, he talked about making love with his wife and getting out of bed and standing naked by the window. I remember he described this as a beautiful thing. I think that was one of the first times I realised just how the negative attitudes within the church to physical love, and to some extent the naked form, were still live issues. That the spiritual is good, wholesome, acceptable and worthy, whereas the physical is bad, dirty, to be avoided and unworthy. This attitude the Church has encouraged has contributed to some of the unhealthy attitudes towards sexuality we see in our world today. Adam and Eve have often been used to convey a negative attitude towards sexuality. Ruth and Boaz with the written euphemisms and use of sexuality for a desired outcome. Hosea enduring the unfaithfulness of Gomer. Then there is Lot concubines, and trade-offs of all sorts. It is not surprising there is so much negativity. But in amongst all this is a beautiful collection of poems of love, celebrating the union between two people, in this case between a man and a woman. 
the book is described as a ballad of love and longing. It is an exchange between the man and the woman about adoration, satisfaction, delight and sexual desire. This is from the Song of Solomon, reading from chapter 2, verses 8 to 13. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. It is interesting to find such a book within the Bible. It does not deal with our relationship with God, with covenant, or with law. Some have tried to use it as an allegory for the relationship between Christ and his church, or God and his love for Israel. Some feminist writers have noted the equality of the relationship expressed in the texts. That is probably quite progressive for the time it was written. And if we accept it as an allegory of the equal relationship between God and people, has huge implications for the way that relationship is expressed in other passages. Such interpretations may help us not have to deal with the burgeoning sexuality of the book, but the texts are really a celebration of the physical love between these two people. Perhaps we should take from that a certain joy and celebration of physical love today. These texts have inspired various paintings and musical pieces which all add to the romance of it, and perhaps shows us that all aspects of our life, including our sexualities, are worthy of bringing to the spiritual. Or to put it another way, God, or the spiritual, is discovered and celebrated in any and every aspect of our living. In the passage from 1 Corinthians, Paul recognises that each individual is gifted differently, some in sexual relationships and others in their singleness. I have met people who are more than content to be on their own, and others whose greatest desire would have been for that companionship. There isn't a right or a wrong, but all have their place within God's love. However, before we get too comfortable with our rose-tinted spectacles on, and lost on the romantic ideal. For the cynical amongst us, perhaps we should consider Solomon. In the Hebrew, the book itself is attributed to Solomon, which gives it a religious credibility. But however beautiful the texts may be, I wonder which of his 700 wives and 300 concubines Solomon was talking about. God of grace and love, we rejoice that all aspects of our human experiences can direct us to you and help us to discover your presence in our midst. We thank you for our healthy human desires and expressions of love. We thank you for the different love we show and are shown, but that we are all united in the love you have given to us in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Amen.